So the first one we'll <laughs> chat about now is why? why? Why do we need why do we need a BIM execution plan, Louis? Great question. Great question. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happens if you don't plan? If you don't plan, we can have a lot of confusion and then a lot of blame, a lot of finger pointing. It was his fault. Yeah. I he didn't plan that. Well, it wasn't me. That happens with any task. And now imagine a big task like a BIM project and multiple teams on that project. Yep. Um, you might experience a lot of confusion and blame. And we see, this is some statistics here from, the, from PMI. They say that mostly the reason for failure on a project is poor communication, um, insufficient resource planning, unrealistic um, expectations. They're, they're the top three. And they're all related to things that we can plan for. So if we can put planning in place first, we get the opportunity to yeah. solve some of these challenges. Yeah, and you know, I've personally been on a couple projects where I wasn't involved in the BIM execution plan. It was just handed, handed to, handed, it was just handed to us. Easy for you um, to say. <laughs> and um, yeah, it just, it just starts off on the wrong foot. So we looked into something called project maturity levels and what we find a lot of the time when we start with just ad hoc, not formal standardized processes and sporadic reporting is that's exactly what happens. There's a lot of confusion, a lot of blame. And so we looked into and we tie this to the lean philosophy of plan, do, check and act. The second level in the maturity uh, process is being planned. You start to have some kind of operational standard, but it's inconsistently managed. And then the third level, when you've got a plan and you start actually doing it, carrying it out, you, you were in the managed level and you have organizational standards, but they're irregularly followed. And then as we go through and we start to integrate those into our workflow, we start checking and we start to have metrics in place and we start to understand the performance across a company. And then the final phase there, when you start to really hit that continuous improvement cycle is when you start to act on that. So when you have sustained performance and you evaluate your decisions based on past performance so that you can influence your future decisions. And that's really what we're trying to get to. So not just following an ad hoc, not formal right. standard and being able to really put something in place that can be continuously improved. Right. But what are we planning? Yeah, that's a good like question. Like we're, we're doing <laughs> BIM. We've just talked a whole load of project management speak, but what are we really planning? What are we planning for? Well, so with BIM, it's, there's a lot of uses, but the first, to really align your uses, you've got to eliminate some of the risk. You've BIM's great at that. Identify what the risk on the projects are. Yep. Uh, for example, you might want to use coordination for a building that has a very complex design. That's one of the most common uses is for coordination. Yep. You might want better quantities so you can yep. get more accurate costing. Or maybe facilities um, requires a lot of information for asset information. Um, so that is a BIM use as well. So aligning those expectations and aligning what those uses are from the very beginning would really help you on, with the following steps to create this BIM execution plan. Yep, eliminate risk. How do you find those things? And then these are some of the models that could be associated with those uses that would allow teams to eliminate a lot of that risk. And some of these are some examples of a typical project life cycle. So all the way from design to co construction and coordination, all the way to facilities. So uh, find, really figure out where you are in the process. So sometimes you're coming in halfway through the design process or just getting into construction. So align those expectations with a client, with a team member right away, and you'll definitely start on the right foot. Yeah, absolutely. So because you can use BIM for so many things. Let's use it for everything. Yeah, why yeah. not? Why not? <laughs> well, like, like we mentioned earlier, you might have already missed out on some opportunities uh, early in design and depending on where you are, but you still might receive some... Um, some, some very uh, broad requirements. <laughs> Contract this, terms here. <laughs> this is an example of some requirements that an owner might, if they're not so informed, ask for. And um, this is the equivalent if you're asking for LOD 400 plus Kobe, um, completely yeah. undefined and uh, um, impossible to deliver. But what they're really asking for is good, fast, and cheap all at the same time. One, and, of, one of the things that, that you know, I'd like to mention here is, is you know, who's involved when you agree on this? You know, sometimes you have a project manager that says, yeah, we've got a BIM guy, they'll do that. 
Um, really, if there is BIM involved, make sure you understand what LOD 400 is or what Kobe data is. Um, that'll really help you out. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't have all three. Yeah, every, I think a lot of people would know this, uh, this sign. Good, fast, and cheap. You, you can pick two of them. You can have good and cheap, but you can't have it fast. Right. You can have fast and good, but you can't have that cheap. And you can have cheap and fast, but you can't have that good. So that's why we need an execution plan in order to be able to align expectations. But what do we need to